Welcome everyone to the Row by Row Garden Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the radio and the internet as well. We got Mama Hoss in the house tonight. What about it, Mama Hoss? What's going on? Not much. Mm. Mm. Well, we got a good show plan. We sure do. Onion. We're going to give you detailed instructions on how to grow onions this show because it is soon becoming onion planting time. The fall of the year is a wonderful time of the year to grow certain things, and we always like to plant our onions around November 1st. So what better time to give everybody a detailed instructions on how to plant their onions, different kinds of onions, and a fertility schedule. How about that? How about it? It's time. Got that coming up. So uh, let's talk about what's up in the garden. Um, our winter squash is done, mm -hmm. and I canned up some of these babies last night. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. This is the sweet dumplings. dumplings. We had sweet dumpling and delicata. delicata. And the sweet dumpling did not, what did I have? The sweet dumplings when you had, you said, you told me last night it held up better than yeah. the delicata. So did. this is the delicata. Oh, that's the delicata. This is yours. Okay, which is this, both of them? Both of them is delicata. Okay. Yeah. So we saved the sweet dumplings to roast. And my delicatas, for some reason or another, they just didn't hold up well. That's not normal. Uh, normal situations, they hold up a lot better. But for some reason, this fall, they just didn't. They you think didn't it was all the rain? Who knows, Who knows what it was. But we had a good crop. Mm -hmm. and we, so I did a video on canning these last night that I'll post later on this week. It was really easy to do. It took a long time. You know, the peel. Um, I didn't, cubed them up and just put them in there. Yeah. And those is going to be great come wintertime for making some type of soup. So you just take them already cubed up, take mm -hmm. them and put them in a roasting pan and roast them with some mm -hmm. olive, oil olive oil and some seasoning. How about that? That'd be wonderful, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? I think yep. they'd be good. Well, you can just eat them right out the jar, mm -hmm. too. Cooler weather is 48 degrees here this morning. So you can tell we got our long sleeves on. It's warming up during the daytime, but cool mornings. I love this time of the year. When you feel that cool, crisp wind on you and you know you need to go back inside and get you a little light jacket. Uh, you don't really know what to wear. So, you mm -hmm. know, you want long sleeves in the morning, but afternoon you want those short mm -hmm. sleeves. Got our strawberries planted. Mm -hmm. Strawberries. If you ordered strawberries and they have shipped this week, you should be getting them today or tomorrow. And, um, hey, it's time to get them in the ground. We'll we put that video link. We did a video on how to plant them and everything you need to know about strawberries yep. and we'll be sure to put it on here yep raised beds to, yep yeah. raised beds strawberry plants look really good i was proud of them and uh, we got all those shipped out so get those strawberries in the ground and uh, next thing you know come early spring you'll have some sweet juicy strawberries mm -hmm. um we're getting our pasture ready too so i planted some uh this last weekend i planted some rye and some australian winter peas and our back field that we're going to put into pasture, we talked about some pigs last week. We're getting prepared for that. We might have found some. We may have found some of you were sending us in a lead on some cooney cooney pigs. I said cooney cooney pigs. Ain't that a good name for a pig? And uh, so I planted the pasture and some ryegrass, Australian winter peas, which would be good grazing for them because these are grazing type pigs, mm -hmm. which is what we wanted. And uh, speaking of pigs, Sunday afternoon, uh, I was out there working. I was, as I was mentioning, I was planting this spot by the back, and the neighbor pulled up, had shot a wild pig down the road. So I had to stop and clean that wild pig. So we got some wild pig in the ice chest that we're going to cook in the next mm -hmm. day or two. That was a pretty good job. It was. But you know, with pork going up like it is, and it is outrageous. We bought some this past Whew. weekend, a pound of bacon, $16. Yep. It was at a little farmer's market but wow now it was great bacon i'd say it was uh, yeah. way better than you get in the grocery store but man the price of meat is going off to, off off the top of the roof it's terrible yeah it makes you really want to think about growing your own food and yeah raising your own meat so uh, we have plenty of wild hogs around here mm -hmm. so i'm gonna get pretty good at skinning those because that's gonna be a good food source right there i had never skinned a wild hog before uh, I've skinned plenty of deer in my time, but uh didn't take much to get the hang of it. And uh, you can do that. you got a good food source right by with these wild hogs, especially in the wintertime there. 
We also been fishing. We had yep. fish three times last week. We did. So we fish a lot. Now what we like to do is we like to fish running water, creeks and rivers. And uh, man, it's been a good year on them. I bet we caught over a hundred last week. Mm -hmm. I I got to thinking. I bet so far this year I have cleaned a thousand fish. Mm -hmm. I probably caught about seven hundred of those. No, <laughs> no. Now you pull your weight most of the time, but not all the time. But you do pretty most good. Most of the time. Most of the time, you have a bad day every I now and then. Bait my own hook. You bait your own hook. Take you. That's if you go fish with me, you got to yeah. bait your own hook and take your own fish off, or you can't fish with me. That's kind of the rules. And here. Fix your own line if you yep. lose all your yep. stuff. We go fish and we don't go babysitting. So that's, <laughs> that's kind of the situation we're in. But we, we got we're pretty good at catching them. Mm -hmm. We've been doing it a long time. We got some strategies there we use. And uh, we love to fish. We love to eat them too. Now, when we catch fish, we clean them and we eat them. That night? They ain't nothing that's giving them away to somebody else. We catch what we clean and we clean what we catch. Catch what we clean. And we clean what we catch. Okay. Yep. And we got a new product. Let's talk about new products. I'm excited about this one right here now. Grow bags. Been looking at these for a long time, but we have got several different sizes of grow bags in because you know a lot of you guys out there do not afford yourself the opportunity to have a big open air garden spot. So even we catch ourselves growing in these grow mm -hmm. bags. And we yeah. grew some last year we grew some uh Rory Finch, Yellow Canary and Tomatoes and things like that. And they're wonderful if you just to do these onesie, twosie type things. And we have 100 gallon, 45 gallon, 15 gallon. There's two more. A one gallon. Five, five gallon. Yep, yeah. I think so. We're going to throw up some pictures of them actually down there close to my raised beds. Yeah, and these would also be great for doing a couple of strawberries or... One gallon and three gallon. Thank you, Carrie. One gallon and three gallon as well. So uh, these are root pouch. And what the amazing thing is, is they're made out of recycled water bottles. Ain't that kind of neat? I really yeah. know that. Yep. Recycled water bottles. Now, when I was coming up back in the day, if you'd have told me I was going to be in buying water and a water bottle at the stove, I told you it was crazy because they wouldn't know such thing as water back then. But nowadays, we all we all guilty of buying water in those water bottles, and uh, they fill up the landfill, and then we can recycle them into these nice root pouches. Something else neat is you can write on these. Miss Mama Hoss is going to write on those. Let's write on that and show them how you can do this. Take you some chalk. If you speak to if you kind of artsy, you can kind of dress it up, and you know you all are just artsy. Look at that. So you can write on there whatever you whatever you want to your variety or whatever you're planning those and these nice nice brown root pouches. And this size, something Carrie mentioned today, like if you put some strawberries in them, mm -hmm. if it's going to come across or get cold, you can just take it right in your house. Yep, yep. These are ideal for growing those small tomatoes mm -hmm. in the springtime. Those those yellow the tomatoes, birdie. perfect for that right there. Heck, we even got some in the, in the greenhouse. We got some of uh, those hot peppers, ghost peppers growing in these in the greenhouse. In the Carolina region. Mm -hmm. Sure yeah. do. Okay. All right, so let's talk about our main segment today. And we're going to be talking about onions mm -hmm. because it's time to plant onions here. Let's talk about the types of onions that you want to grow in your garden. The number one is what most of y'all recognize out there is what we call bulb onions. So this here where we live, a lot of people prefer these Vidalia onions, but this is just your regular onion that you see in the grocery store that you would buy. Now we grow these right here in the field and we plant them in November and we overwinter them and harvest them in early spring because we're in that short day map. Mm -hmm. And we're going to throw that map up there so you can get an idea when you see short day, intermediate day, and then long day, you have to plant a variety of onions conducive to where you live at. And we refer to these things as short day, intermediate day, and long day. These short day onions, we plant in November. We overwin them, harvest early spring. You guys in intermediate day and long day are going to plant y'all's in the springtime and harvest them later spring. So we have the bulb type onions right here. Then we have what some of you call spring onions or bunching onions. And you would buy these in the grocery store 
or you could grow these yourself and you would cut the root off of them and kind of dice them up or either eat them raw. I like to eat them raw. Now the two varieties of these that we sell is, I'm gonna let you say that word right there. How about that? I'm gonna get my glasses. Yep. Warrior Bunch and Onion. And then uh, we've got another one here that's got a- Oh, I don't know if I can say it. Nasatro? Yeah, Nasatro, that's good with me. Bunch and Onion. Now both of these are about 60 to 65 days to maturity. Now, I, a couple of years ago, I grew both these side by side, and I'm going to be honest with y'all, I could not tell the difference in them. So I'm not going to be able to recommend one variety over the other one. And that's like these? Yep. So if you're interested in growing a bunch of onion, these are real easy to grow, and they come off a good bit quicker than a bulb onion does. Now, you would plant these if you live in the short day area. You could still plant them now and get you a crop off this fall, and you could plant them again come springtime and get you another crop off in the springtime. If you live further up north, you're probably going to be limited to doing it in the springtime. We had a viewer in 8B call yesterday about mm -hmm. planting these onions in the spring. Yeah, you can plant those in the spring. I didn't Absolutely. Know that. Now, I think these are ideal to plant and raise bees. It didn't take a lot of them, and you plant oh. these pretty thick. Can you plant them from seed or do you need Plant them from seed. So you don't plant these from transplants. You plant these directly from seed. So you would direct seed these directly into your bed. Mm -hmm. Plant them about an inch apart, something like that right there. And that would be perfect right there to grow these. They grow off in 60, 60 to 65 days. So it is a good filling crop for you there. Where the bunch of onion excuse me, that's a bunch of things, where the bulb onions is going to take longer. However, these are going to store for you all throughout the summertime. You're going to have onions, heck, all the way into fall. Now, I'm going to bring in to one more type of onion, and I'm just simply going to do this because it is one of my favorites. But if you've kept up with us very long, you know we like to grow these multiplying onions. Now, this is an onion that we We've grown here in the South for generations and generations. Mm, that smells good. And I, I actually dug this yesterday out and washed them off some. But these you would eat the same way as you would that. Now this is a little, these are a little on the smaller side. They weren't really ready to dig. Mm -hmm. But I want you to see how many was in one bunch there. These are multiplying onions. So you would plant one onion set. And these would multiply up, and then you could pick them off and eat them as you want, and then use the rest of them to replant or vice versa. Another thing, too, you can actually grow these year-round. You can grow them all winter long and then all summer long. These right here have been growing all summer long. Now, if you grow them during the wintertime, the bulb gets a little bit bigger in the springtime than the summer ones do. So you separate them and you plant this one little mm -hmm. one? Or you can separate them and pick out some to eat. So the theory behind this is... You always got a good supply of onions and you can replant them. So you're talking about self-sufficient. These right here is the idea of self-sufficient onions because they multiply and reproduce. And you never, once you get started with your own rootstock, you never run out of them. These are a little bit spicy, have a little bit more flavor to them than some of these type of onions here. So these are ideal for cooking. So there you have it. We got the multiplying onions. Right Bubbing onions and then the bunching onions. You would eat the multiplying onions and the bunching onions similarly. And, you know, this is the ones you slice up and put on a hamburger there. Mm -hmm. Should be their own food group. We eat those almost every meal. Oh, yeah, we saute those. And these right here are wonderful, too. We we like to eat these right here, especially with greens and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I love the, the green part of them. So, you know, I think you should probably be growing all three. We love to grow all three, but that gives you an idea of the different types of onions, and you need a different strategy for growing each one of them. These are really easy to grow once you get started. These are easy to grow. These are a little more complicated. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the bulb and onions because those are the most popular ones. All right. So... We have a chart that we're going to put up that shows you on the website when you would plant your onions here. We're going to talk about fertilizing. Okay. Now, also, you can grow these in raised beds. And a lot of you people out there really struggle with how to grow onions. The two major things you need to understand is you got to plant the right variety for where you live. And also, you got to plant it at the right time. So a short-day onion starts the bulbing process 
where the day length reaches 10 to 12 hours. Intermediate day starts that bulbing process when daylight hours reach 12 to 13 hours. And long day, you guys way up north, start that bulbing process when day length reaches 14 to 16 hours. All right, so we're going to concentrate today on growing them in the south on a short day onion schedule. But this same schedule would relate to you guys in this plant the intermediate day and the long day. You just would do it at a different time frame. All right, so let's first look at in-ground planting. Now this is you guys out there that's going to plant onions in ground, which is the way I do. All right, the first thing you want to do is make sure your, your pH or your soil is between 6.0 and 6.5. So you want to do a good soil testing ahead of time and make sure that you got your pH adjusted to that. Then, uh, about a week before you plant, you want to incorporate 1.5 cups of our organic fertilizer, 1.5 cups per 10 foot of row. And what that's going to do is get your microbes really working in your soil and get your soil alive and hungry. So you want to do that. And then you want to plant. And after you plant, you want to leave them alone just a little bit because you've already got that organic fertilizer in there to start and to break down and start to work. Now, two weeks after planting, you want to start with your injector. Now, I'm giving you all this information here, assuming that you're planting on drip tape because that's the way we do it. We like to plant on drip tape because you never know when you're going to have one of those dry stretches. If you've got that drip tape down there, you can water very easily. We've talked about the benefits of drip tape over and over again. But you can also inject your fertility into that drip tape using our Hoss fertilizer injector. And this schedule that I'm giving you is using all those components. So two weeks after planting with your Hoss fertilizer injector in your drip tape, you want to put in two cups of 20-20-20 in your Hoss fertilizer injector, and you want to fertilize that amount out per thousand square feet of garden space. Okay, every three weeks after, excuse me, every week after that, for three consecutive weeks, you want to mix two cups up of 20-20-20, and you want to add a half cup of your Hoss MicroBoost micronutrient supplements and do the same thing. That is going to be for a thousand square feet. Now, the reason for the micro boost is boron. Boron is extremely important for onion production. So you want to make sure you get all those miners in there and that uh, boron is in that micronutrient micro boost along with some other things there. So that makes everything for a good healthy diet. Every fourth week, you want to do a side dress. Now you could do this, you could you, this ammonia sulfate, you, it is soluble and you could put it through your fertilizer injector. Uh, or you could just side dress it next to the plant. I kind of like to side dress it next to the plant and get, mix it up a little bit. And it seems to make those root systems grow out a little bit further. At this point in the game, you've got a pretty established root system. So alternate every fourth week with a side dress of ammonia sulfate for 10, excuse me, for a thousand foot. No, that's 10 foot. For 10 foot of row. You want to start over again after this with your two cups of 20, 20, 20, and then every three weeks you go back to your fourth week. And that's going to put you pretty close to having a good fertility schedule there on your onions. The ammonia sulfate is going to give you the sulfur, which is really important for onion production. Now here's the thing. We hear a lot of people talk about the bulbing process and when you should stop fertilizing. We learned this a few years ago, that you've got to stop fertilizing when that onion starts to bub. You want to build that green leaf first, and then when the onion starts to bub, that's when you got to be careful with your fertility for several different reasons. About 30 days before you get ready to harvest, and that's the best, that's the best way I can put it, you want to stop all fertility. Some people say that's in the 13th leaf stage of the plant, for us, normally it runs into about the third week in February is when our onions start to bub. And that's when we cut off our fertilizer and let the onion bub. You want to stress the plant a little bit, let it bub. What you will find if you do this is you're going to make bigger onions. They're going to store better. But also, and I didn't know this to just the other day, I was speaking to one of the research guys at the Vidalia uh, Onion Research Center. They say the sweet 
flavor also comes from some of that stop and that fertilizer. Really? Yep. Oh. So we know having a sweet onion has several different things that comes together and makes that, but stopping that fertilizer 30 days before harvest will help make that flavor of that onion better as store better and make bigger onions. So it's really important to do that. And also it will help you a little bit with some disease problems as well. And some of that detail you went over, it's going to be on the website soon. Yeah. So we just give you an overview right here. We got this onion plant guy that we're working on the website and within probably two or three weeks, we'll have all this on our website under our Haas University tab, which is a new tab we got coming showing all the garden growing guides. So that's a good one for you guys that's going to plant in ground with drip tape with a fertilizer injector. Now let's go over raised beds. Raised beds, I come up with this a little bit different because this is a good situation for you guys out there that like to raise beds. Maybe you don't have that big of an area to grow, but you're still able to grow plenty of onions. But we're going to break this down so that you don't need as much of equipment and you can be successful growing onions on a smaller scale. Okay, same thing on your soil. You want to test it, make sure it's between 6 and 6.0 pH. Then one week before planting, just like the end ground, you want to incorporate 1.5 cups of the complete organic per 10 foot of row. You want to plant your onions, and this will also work with any of the onions we talked about today, the bunching onion, um, the bubbing onions or the multiplying onions. The only, the only drawback is that going to be on your bunch of onions. They're going to get ready or mature a lot quicker. So you're going to back this off as far as when you stop fertilizing on it shorter. The other two, you can pretty much stay the same. Okay. Two weeks after planting, you're going to go back with the complete organic fertilizer, two cups, side dress per 10 foot of uh, row space. Then three weeks, for three consecutive weeks, you're going to use these two products right here. And this is going to be real easy. You're going to take one tablet of each and these dissolve in the water. Mix it into a one gallon watering can. Or if you don't have that, you can simply use a five gallon bucket. And this fertilizer will dissolve and you will have liquid fertilizer. At that point, you want to take a gallon of the solution and apply it to 10 foot row spacing. And you want to do this once a week for three weeks. And as the fourth week rolls around, you want to take that ammonia sulfate because onions love that sulfur and you want to side dress with it at a half cup per 10 foot of row. Re restart and repeat is necessary here to carry you through the season there. There again, on your bubbling onions, you want to stop 30 days before harvest. On your multiplying onions, I wouldn't, I would fertilize them all the way through on the multiplying onions. On the bunching onions, I would probably stop at about two to three weeks before harvest. What do you think about that? Sounds good. That's a great schedule right there for, for growing in raised beds. It lays it out to a T there. I uh, did quite a bit of thinking and figuring and all that and gives you your total nutrient requirements for that onion crop. And you know what? You take a four by eight raised bed, you can grow a lot of onions mm -hmm. in the four by eight raised bed. I grew onions for the first time last year in yep. my raised beds. Yep. And then it don't cost much because you got these at uh, I six. I love these. You got these at six dollars a piece, and these can carry you through the whole season, along with a couple other products right there, and probably have plenty left over. So there you have it, folks. What about? I onion growing guide for you this fall. No excuses why you shouldn't be growing onions, whether you got a large garden spot or whether you just got a few raised beds. You too can be successful at growing onions with this particular schedule. And what about the water requirements? Water requirements is normally about an inch, an inch and a half per week. So if you don't get that rain, put an inch, an inch and a half per week. If you're getting rain, lay off of it. And spacing. Spacing now, this on the bubbling onions, this is a little trick. I'm glad you brought it up. Okay, this is what we do. Normally, you, if to grow these bubs right here, you want to plant the, your starts, your plants about six inches apart. But what we do is we plant them about three inches apart, and then we go in there and pull every other one as they start to bub. And then we got green onions we can eat along, and then we end up getting our, our spacing for that. Now, for you guys that want to grow these type of onions right here, we have onion plants available 
starts available that's going to be ready between November 1st and 5th sometime in there. We've already sold out of the Red Creole, but the two varieties we have left is Plethora and Savannah Sweet. Both of those are Vidalia approved varieties. And we have some of those, not a lot, but we have some of those left. So here's a link right here that you can go check those out and buy. You were selling 50 to bundle. You can get your onion plants and get them started in the ground, whether you want to plant them in raised beds or um, plant them in ground. Plant them up. If you want to eat the green onions in between, plant them about three inches apart. If you don't, plant them about six inches apart to make these big old onion bulbs. Sounds good. All right. So, what's next? Corny joke. Uh, corny joke of the week? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, I'm not privy to the corny joke of the week. No. I've not heard it. Where does an onion go to have a few drinks? I don't think I've gotten one yet. I don't know. A salad bar. <laughs> All right. That was better than yours last week. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Salad bar. Send in your corny jokes. Yep. All right, folks. Glad you enjoyed it. Glad you was with us. Hope you in, in, uh, learned something. Hope it inspires you to get out there and try you some onions. I think you'll be glad you did. We enjoy growing onions, and we enjoy eating onions. We eat onions just about with every meal. We do. Yep. All right. So now it's time for you to get out there and get dirty. <laughs>